Hey friends, um, I want uh, to recognize a couple of folks who are here tonight. Um, stand up if you've been arrested in West Roxbury. Uh, you know, resisting the pipeline, not doing anything else. <laughs> Um, the West Roxbury Lateral is part of um, the Spectra AIM project, and it's a just a five-mile little spur. And uh, we decided, some folks decided that um, just because it's just a five-mile little spur, that we really needed to to draw the line. And so we started working together, um, folks in West Roxbury, in a group called uh, Swirl that stopped the West Roxbury Lateral. Um, really started organizing and educating folks in their community last fall when they first found out about it. And, um, you know, normal shenanigans with Burke and trying to make sure that not that many people know about it so not that many people can come out and comment. They had their only public comment, um, their only public hearing was uh, the night before a uh, primary election and almost nobody came because they were out doing primary election things. Um, but, but they really started building and building. And then there, there, was a, there was another group of people who decided when the construction on that little pipe started happening in um, Dedham and Westwood, that uh, we were probably gonna have to do something besides, something in addition to educating, and that we were gonna have to ramp up some kind of resistance. So this little group called Resist the Pipeline was formed, and it actually, that URL was available. So resistthepipeline.org. Um, and they put up a pledge of resistance and asking people to pledge to take civil disobedience action if construction began in Boston. And um, by the time I really got involved with the group in July, they had 150 people who had committed to take an action like that, and 200 other people who had committed to support those actions. And we've more than doubled both of those numbers by now. And unfortunately, Boston, there is construction, there was construction happening in Boston. It started in the beginning of October. Um, but in the beginning of October, we also decided that we needed a sustained campaign of civil disobedience. So over the course of six weeks, uh, 41 folks were arrested blocking construction in West Roxbury. And the most exciting part is that um, on the first Saturday in November, we decided let's, instead of just shutting down, you know, the, the construction for like an hour, an hour and a half with a couple of people or even one day we had 12, um, let's, let's bring a lot of people who are prepared to take that risk on a Saturday because they were doing construction on a Saturday. And let's shut it down for all day. So let's have two people go in and shut down the site. And as soon as they're arrested and taken away, we'll let them start the machines again just for fun. And then we'll send two more people in. And we'll do that for all day. And we weren't terribly secretive about what we were doing. And we called for a big public rally. And they didn't show up to work. So, you know, we cost them a day of work. And then we announced, well, let's do that again next Saturday. We just announced it publicly and you know, see if it can work again. You know, you've got all these people, we've got like 45 people ready to, you know, find another day. And they still lost, um, lost a day of work. So the next Saturday morning, we showed up. And not only was there no construction, they had paved everything over and gone home a full two weeks earlier than they intended to for the winter. So we declared, you know, a minor victory. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we're, so we're really excited about that victory. Um, we have on good authority that they meant to work till December 1st. And uh, we figure that they think that we're gonna get distracted and do, you know, not be paying attention when they come back in April. But. Um, but when they come back in April, we're going to be ready. We're going to be organizing all through the winter. One thing we want y'all to think about doing, I'm announcing this, right, Marissa? Uh, An know. invitation for, Jan for January? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so um, you might know that, um, that Massachusetts is home to one of the FERC commissioners, Cheryl LaFleur. She's the only one who lives um, east of the Mississippi River. So we figure we have a responsibility. Um, we have her address. Um, no children live in her house, 
Um, but there is a sidewalk out front. And we're going to start visiting her in January. And we're going to invite all of you to come. Um, we figured that that sidewalk is about as far from her front door as the West Roxbury lateral is from the front doors that we've been standing in front of. Because not only were people getting arrested once a week in West Roxbury, there was a, there's a vigil every day. People holding signs out there in the traffic every morning. And, um, and we can see how close that 750 pounds per square inch pipe is to people's front doors. And so we figure standing in front of Cheryl's house and just giving her a visual of how close that is, that's actually a lot less dangerous than, um, than what she's doing, right? What she's allowing right in front of other people's homes. So you'll hear from us. We'll be inviting you to come see Cheryl because we know that all of these fights we're going to have to just keep fighting like this until we change the system that is FERC. So while we have to keep fighting these fights, we have to make that change too. So um, I think we'll all do that together probably.